Hey, what's up, guys? This is Tibbs, and this is Dante. Uh, as you know, Game Fiend 127. I am Blockbuster Tibbs. You can check my channel out at BlockBT Vids. Uh, of course, this is Drama Script this Saturdays. Hopefully, this will be uploaded on Saturday, not tomorrow on Sunday. But uh, again, we have our, our usual uh, Raw, TNA, and SmackDown. Talk about the Raw first. I'll hand it off to Mr. Game Fiend here. Okay, the things that stood out to me on this Pax Week's Raw. First off, they started Raw off, and Raw was in UK, so Raw was taped. They started Raw off with the no disqualification match between Mark Henry and CM Punk. I enjoyed the match. Obviously, Punk won because this is a TNA World Main Event title. Rarely changed hands on television for free. Really, really enjoyed the match. And I enjoyed the promo between, afterwards between Punk and Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho on the Titan Tron, which actually Punk actually won up on Chris Jericho. Like, I remember Punk said something and Chris Jericho didn't have a comeback in response, and he just repeated himself over, which is rare. Other things that stood out to me was the Santino coming out in 25 different thousand um, soccer jerseys, because uh, UK is very, very big on soccer. There's like 30 teams in like one small area in, in the UK. Very enjoyed that. Pacino Santino's very, very funny. Enjoyed the match with David Otunga, aka the bootleg masterpiece. And Santino won that match cleanly because he's the face and he hit him he hit David Otunga with the Cobra. Another thing that stood out to me on Raw was the main event, which was John Cena versus Lord Lord Sentai and John Cena lost a main event. The last I can't recall the last time John Cena lost a main event on Raw and months. But it wasn't clean because David Otunga interfered and then Lord Sensai hit him with his signature move and then pinned him on The last time I, I remember John Cena losing cleanly in a main event was when um, On television because he did I, I'm so, I'm so, on, He did so, cleanly at WrestleMania No, I, yeah, but right. on, on, on Raw was a couple years ago when he faced HBK in that London that Which lasted for an hour. An hour and, and it's funny that he lost. People don't give credit to God, John Cena, but anyways, but yeah, he lost playing to that. He lost playing to uh, Triple H a couple years ago. I think it was like a year or two ago. But it wasn't the main event. But yeah, so anything else done up here for you? Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, the Lord, the, the, the whole Lord Tense I think was kind of uh, cool to see because. Of course, um, he wasn't going to lose cleanly, John Cena. But it's good to see that he does lose. He's getting to that point where um, he's putting guys over. Uh, he's been putting guys over that people don't see. Uh, people still hate on him and blah, blah, blah. But he's lost a couple of times in the past year to guys that are going to be risen up. Uh, Lord Lord Tessai now, to the kids, is a main villain because he beat him. Even though it took David Otunga and John Laura Nice to do so, uh, but um, a lot of people are saying that that um, that John Cena is becoming weaker because he's losing all these matches. No, he's not, because he's gonna rise above hate, and eventually he's gonna win a pay-per-view match. And people are gonna uh, is gonna uh, say that he's Superman and shit all over again. So no matter what John Cena and the WWE creative does. Smash people are gonna hate because people just generally hate John Cena. They don't even know the guy. They just hate John Cena, which is weird. If they should just be hating Vince because last time I checked, Vince has the last word in anything. So if you don't like what John Cena is doing, you should hate Vince, not Cena. But people hate Cena, but yet you still go to the shows, which you should be hating Vince. But you go to the show, you put money in Vince's pocket, but yet you hate the main attraction of the show. Which is Cena, mm -hmm. and, of, and of course, um, the one of the main attractions of Raw was the interview with Brock Lesnar. It was very UFC style. I liked it because it, he not it's, it's not the Brock Lesnar that we knew back in O2 uh, before he left to the UFC. Now he's more in tune into the Ultimate Fighting, as you saw when he busted his chest his lip on the previous Raw. Uh, but um, I liked the interview. It was very raw. It was it was definitely not PG because um, basically uh, the way he sees down so John Cena's leg is pissed because he's gonna shit himself. So um, excuse my language, but that's what it, that's what Brock Lesnar said. I liked it uh, because he brings a different element now. Uh, it's 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 not original because it's done in the UFC, but it's original in the WWE world of people who don't who don't watch UFC. 
but I liked it. Um, I already seen his his uh, his attire for 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 the ring. Looks pretty cool. Uh, it's the UFC trunks and his boots. Of course, yeah, he, he needs to have boots because he's not gonna be barefoot <laughs> for fighting against John Cena. And plus, in the no DQ match, yeah. But aside from that, I, I'm really interested in seeing what's gonna happen between Brock Lesnar and John Cena and the Tree Rules. Uh, I know for sure that um, that John Cena is gonna lose because you can't have Brock Lesnar coming out of nowhere and just lose. Celebrities things. don't lose. Well, he's not technically a just celebrity anymore. He just he's a full. Well, not a full time, mostly full time wrestler now. He's doing 40 appearances. Um, yeah, 42 appearances. How many weeks are in a year? 52. 52. So, so that's okay. Yeah. It's alright. It'll be the majority of the year. But, uh, so, um, I'm going on to TNA since we're doing everything in Chronicle. Oh, before we go to TNA, the Dan Bryant promo. Yes. 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 Now what's the TNA? <laughs> Now TNA, uh, basically it was the uh, impact after lockdown. Uh, it was a uh, usual TNA pay-per-view. Uh, not so impressive, of course. Um, basically, now we got RVD as a random number one contender. Uh, James Storm is being all depressed. I'm gonna I'm I'm cut TNA short because, yeah. I don't get, see the thing I had of TNA, is well, we're gonna we're gonna jump head four weeks. Did you see the Did you see the promo for for uh, the promo video they have for Sacrifice? Nothing. Is it okay? I'll put the link of the promo video for Sacrifice. Did you Did you see the poster of Sacrifice? Yes. Okay. The poster set. The poster for Sacrifice is good. The promo video for Sacrifice is good. But and I'm not, I'm gonna take it a step further. Some of their promo vids that they do for their pay per views are better than WWE promo vids. But it's just that the actual product overall itself winds up sucking like why did this paper you suck you had a build-up for the past four months between Robert Roode and James Storm and didn't live up to the hype you had everything that was the best feud besides that in the last five years of TNA that I can remember and it didn't go anywhere <laughs> so now Rob Van Dam coming out of nowhere and being number one contender because of the triple threat match on Impact. So I don't, I don't get it. Uh, uh, basically, Hulk Hogan is going to do an open, open uh, fight night with basically some, uh, somebody from OVW. Well, they say an outside wrestler uh, outside from, outside from uh, TNA. But I think it's going to be OVW guys because they're trying to merge OVW guys to TNA. Uh, which will be good because it will be like so, so something that the is doing because the WWE used to be with OVW, uh, got guys like John Cena and Randy Orton. So maybe it's something my good, it's just something good might, might come up. But um, uh, they, they can challenge anybody that, that they want, of course, once a month. And any TNA wrestler has to be ready to fight, especially the champions. And also he told Devon Dudley, since he wants to be a fighting champion, why not defend your title every week? So, Devon Dudley every Wait. week. Like Rob Van Dam did at ECW? Something like that. Yeah. It's, it's original. <laughs> I just caught that. It's so like Rob Van Dam at ECW when he had the TV title. Yep. And the, so, they're going to book Devon to be the longest running tag team champion. And that would be sad. is from the from me. That would be, but that would be, but top D won't be Rob Van Dam's record. And it's a TV title though. It and it's the same exact title. Uh, that would be disgusting. <laughs> so Gunner was the the Gunner was the first um, guy that was gonna face uh, Devon, and of course Devon beat Gunner. Um, a random tag team uh, went together, and it was Crimson. Crimson and Bully Ray versus Matt Morgan and um, and uh, man T and Austin Aries. Yeah, Austin Aries. Yeah, I didn't get about Austin Aries. That match was so random. I almost forgot about it. But uh, again, um, Bully Ray and Gunner randomly beat the random team of Austin Aries in a random match in the random show. So that that's a random so, company. So that so, right. gets random money. So um, that was pretty much TNA. Um, I mean, nothing, nothing like over the top happened as usual. Um, 
The sacrifice will be the next pay-per-view, right? Yes, May 3rd. No, May 15th. May 15th? Yes, May 15th. Um, I will I'll probably watch that on stream and not care about it while I'm watching it. Probably go to the bar at, right after the first match. But whatever. Go out to SmackDown now while he's checking his phone now. Yes, while I'm checking my phone. SmackDown was very... Yo, Smack... Okay, if you guys haven't noticed yet, the reason why SmackDown wasn't uploaded yet on WWE.com, not WWE.com, well, yeah, it does get uploaded on WWE.com, is that I found uh, somebody that recorded SmackDown, and it was only total length 52 minutes. So, yeah, that's pretty bad. So, good thing I watched it on their website, the bits and pieces that they do post, because I can only imagine the amount of commercials that you guys have to sit through. You would actually watch it on Friday from 8 to 10. <laughs> but moving on, the stuff, the things that stood out to me as I looked from my calendar on my phone, the things that stuck to me on was the Dan Bryan promo, and he actually said the word no when he usually chants yes, yes, yes. Again, he denied um, AJ to get them to go get them two back together, and then after that, AJ had a match with Natalya, and AJ flipped out, got all emotional, and beat the <laughs> hell out of Natalya, but got disqualified. Yeah. Well, apparently busted her open too. What was that? Yeah, after, after the match on, on on the dirt sheets, that Natalia was was mildly busted open, and had to get had to be cleaned up a little bit. Nothing major than like like Cody Rhodes being busted up a couple months ago. But uh, yeah, so um, yeah, I kind of I kind of like that because AJ is a small person, so seeing that uh, that, that little fire kind of cool. But again. Daniel Bryan just told her that he wished, he wished that she wasn't born. So that was pretty damn funny. Yeah, that, um, was, that was pretty funny. So, um, what else happened? Another thing that stood out to me was there was a Royal's Clay sighting with Hornswoggle, which Hornswoggle, at the end of the match, the match was over, Hornswoggle did the tag pole into a split, mm -hmm. which was kind of... Yeah. I, I don't know. It was random. Yeah, it was random. Hey, it was random for more, the More important things, Big Show had a match against the Brooklyn Del Rio. Big Show lost due to Cody Rhodes getting in, in, uh, interfering. Mm -hmm. uh, Alberto Del Rio wins. Then there was a triple threat between Greg Kali, Randy Orton, and Sheamus. You mean Cody, uh, six man tag? Six man tag, yeah. Uh, Cody Rhodes uh, hit Kali on the leg while he's getting the ring, took him out. Big Show replaced him, and Cody Rhodes' team was it was Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes. Heels. 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 Uh, it's not Cody Steve. Just Cody Rhodes. No, it was true. <laughs> it was Cody Steve. Think about the. the, the was, wow. Cody Rhodes, Daniel Bryan. Yeah, Cody Rhodes, Daniel Bryan, and Mark, and, and Mark Henry. There you go. That was the match. And basically, everybody wanted up doing everybody's finisher on Mark Henry, and then that's how, that's how SmackDown ended. Like I said, SmackDown was only an hour. Oh, a random tag match. Yeah, was a, it, it, it was a random pairing, even though he, he told me before the taping that it's not random. It was random where how, the, okay, the Usos have been a legit, whoa. Oh, yeah, it was the Usos versus Darren Young and, and Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil. So, basically, yeah, he could go into detail. The Usos have been jobbing for the past Ten years to random tag teams. Stop it, WWE. I mean, the Usos did get them. They did, they did get a win. A couple. It wasn't last week or two weeks ago. Yeah. But you have to make them win a couple more times. You can't have the Usos, which is a good tag team. They haven't been. They haven't been broken up yet. Knock on wood. And lose to random tag teams like Titus O'Neil and Darren Young. When they won on Raw the past week. Why? Speaking of par uh, 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 random, random uh, parents on Raw, it was Big Show and uh, Big Show and Kali versus Epico and Primo, which completely was washed. Which sense. makes no sense. WWE, please find a, a decent tag division without somebody smoking some weed like Evan Bourne and get uh, suspended. Evan Bourne, you're the reason why that the tag team division died. Well, even, even though it was already dead. But anyways, I digress. Back to SmackDown. SmackDown, again, it was a random pairing. 
Uh, Darren Young and Tyrus O'Neill beat the Usos. Uh, of course, we had another right back appearance. Right back on. Feed me more. And then, yeah, that's what right back says. It, uh, right back looks like a steroid. Uh, like, like RVD was steroids and ball. Yeah. Pretty it's, much. It's scary. I mean, he's scary strong. I like the way they're building him a little bit. But yeah, he looks like a, like RVD just bald in steroids. And he squashed another rabbit. Yeah, that, that, that beatdown was just too... Uh, the guy was a stick. Yeah, he was. The guy was a stick. The guy was a stick. But aside from that, um, yeah, so that's pretty much that's, it for all three was, shows. That was it for all three shows. And by the way, yeah, uh, Sacrifice is May 13th, not 15th. That's what I was checking on my phone for. Yeah. And yeah, I finally got to it. I finally found my calendar. I only use the calendar app like three times a year. <laughs> so yeah. Basically, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, this is Game Free Feeder World Games, guys, along with uh, J Tibbs, Blockbuster, aka, and we're signing off. Peace. Later.